Welcome to Duke University Chapel, an icon of the university, a center for ecumenical Christian worship, and a sanctuary for all people. Standing at 210 feet in the center of campus, Duke University Chapel is indeed the great towering church that founder James B. Duke envisioned. Of the original buildings at Duke University, the chapel was the first to be planned and the last to be built. The cornerstone was laid October 22, 1930, and construction of the chapel continued for the next five years. The unique stone that makes up the outside of the chapel and the many other buildings on Duke's West Campus is actually from a quarry in the nearby town of Hillsboro. Known as Carolina Bluestone or Hillsboro Bluestone, the volcanic stone has become an iconic Duke symbol. Finally, up towards the sky near the top of the tower, sits the 50 bell J. Samuel Hammond Carillon. The instrument is played live each weekday at 5 p.m. and can be heard from across campus. Although Duke Chapel is not a Methodist church, members of the Duke family were devout Methodists. For this reason, above the portal is a sculpture of the Methodist evangelist John Wesley as well as sculptures of other men who helped advance the American Methodist movement, Thomas Koch, George Whitfield, and Francis Asbury. On the left side of the portal are statues of notable church reformers, the Italian friar Girolamo Savonarola, the German theologian Martin Luther, and the English scholar John Wycliffe. On the right are figures of the American South, the statesman Thomas Jefferson, and the poet Sidney Lanier. Between the two statues is a pedestal where a statue of Robert E. Lee used to be. The university removed the statue in 2017 as an expression of the deep and abiding values of the university and is leaving the space empty as a symbol of a hole that is in the heart of the United States of America and perhaps in our own human hearts. That hole that is from the sin of racism and hatred of any kind. The narthex is the entry point for visitors of all kinds, designed to offer a transitional space from the hustle and bustle of campus life before entering the sanctuary. While many people walk right through, this is a space to pause and look up. It is here that we see the first set of stained glass windows in the building. If you look closely, you will see that the main characters in all these windows are women from the Hebrew scriptures. Ruth, Naomi, Esther, Hagar, Rebecca, and Hannah welcome you into the space. Here you will also find a plaque honoring Julian Abel, an African-American architect who designed the chapel, along with many of the buildings on West Campus. He worked for the Trombauer firm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His contributions were not widely known until his grandniece attended Duke in the 1980s. He was officially recognized by the university for his work in 2016 with the dedication of the main quads and the installation of this plaque. Moving into the sanctuary, we are once again greeted by women. These figures represent eruditio et religio, meaning knowledge and religion or faith and learning. Across from these statues, if you look very closely, you may find a tiny mouse lurking. This little creature was carved from chapel pews that burned in a fire in the 70s, an endearing gift to the chapel created from the aftermath of such a tragic event. The main part of the chapel is called the nave. It is here that you can see the majority of the spectacular stained glass artwork. There are 77 stained glass windows in the chapel containing over 1 million pieces of glass imported from all across Europe. They were constructed by the New York-based Bonowit Company. The top windows depict stories from the Old Testament, and the bottom windows depict stories from the New Testament. The stories are in chronological order, going clockwise. While the outside of the chapel is made of the Carolina bluestone, as mentioned before, the interior is made of mostly Indiana limestone and Gustavino tile, a stone composite, on the ceiling. Gustavino tile was a very popular option in the early 20th century 
as it provided a more lightweight option for vaulted ceilings like ours. In addition to its spectacular architecture and stained glass windows, the chapel is also set apart by its four pipe organs. If you turn around, you will see the Benjamin N. Duke Memorial Organ, known as the Flintrop, because of its Dutch builder, Dirk Flintrop. It is a sight to behold. This ornate instrument contains over 5,000 pipes and was installed in 1976. We are now in what is called the crossing of the chapel. In traditional cathedrals, a tower or belfry would sit above this part of the chapel. However, as you may have noticed, our tower is located at the entrance to the chapel. Mr. Duke made this choice intentionally, again wanting the tower to be a dominating presence in the center of campus. To the right is the pulpit. Chapel Dean, Luke Powery, and other ministers preach from here each Sunday. Over the years, this pulpit has hosted a variety of prominent preachers. Will you listen to these words? We are again being challenged by this vision of the gospel. Yes, God has given us something new. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. We have been made right with God and reconciled. No condemnation. We can have a new creation through a personal relationship with Christ. This is the chancel. You see the finest example of the wood carving in the chapel on the walls of the chancel called the Reredos. These panels depict three scenes from Jesus's life. Depending on the day of the week, you may hear one of our choirs singing from the stalls of the chancel, including the Vespers Ensemble, Evensong Singers, and participants in Jazz Vespers. The Duke Chapel Choir sings from here during Sunday morning services. There are two organs here in the chancel. The first is the Kathleen Upton Burns McClendon organ. It was built and installed in 1932 as the chapel was being built by the Aeolian Organ Company. It contains 6,600 pipes and sits above the chancel. The organ underwent a complete restoration in 2008. The other organ, a continuo organ, also usually sits up in the chancel. It is a small organ used mostly for accompaniment. Tucked away in the left transept is the Memorial Chapel. This quaint and quiet space was added to the original design of the chapel with funding from the Duke Memorial Association, founded in 1928. It hosts the final resting place of the three original Duke benefactors. Washington Duke, who paid to move Trinity College, a training school for pastors from Trinity, North Carolina to Durham. James B. Duke, son of Washington Duke, who donated the money to transform Trinity College into a university named after his father. And his brother, Benjamin Duke, who lived locally and helped convince James to donate the money. If you look up, you will see the Bramba organ, the fourth organ in the chapel. It sits in what is called a swallow's nest on the right wall and was installed in 1997. It is tuned to a natural or mean tone. This style of tuning was popular during the Renaissance era, so pieces played on this instrument from that time period sound particularly remarkable. The windows in the Memorial Chapel 
are different than those in the rest of the chapel. Instead of containing figures and scenes, they are made in the French style grisaille, which is an ornamental, non-figurative design painted with black lines on colorless glass. The memorial chapel is used for small services, such as baptisms, prayers, and a weekly midday Catholic mass. It is a beautiful example of how the chapel is truly a university chapel, serving the needs of Protestant and Catholic students, as well as alumni and other members of the Duke community. Between the memorial chapel and the chancel, a flight of steps descends to the crypt. Here are buried a number of past university presidents and their wives, as well as other important figures in the university's history. William Preston Few, the first president of Duke University, Miss Nanaline Holt Duke, wife of James B. Duke, J. Darrell Hart, fourth president of Duke University, Mrs. Mary Johnson Hart, wife of J. Darrell Hart, Terry Sanford, sixth president of Duke University, U.S. Senator and Governor of North Carolina, and Mrs. Margaret Rose Sanford, wife of Terry Sanford. The ashes of James A. Thomas, chairman of the Duke Memorial Association, James T. Cleland, former Dean of Duke Chapel, and his wife, Miss Alice Mead Cleland, are also interred here. While the crypt is open to the public, the tower is reserved for Duke students and Duke community. <laughs> A beloved tradition for students, a tower climb gives every Duke student the chance to see the whole campus and the surrounding area from a bird's eye view. Yeah.